Hello there, friends, and welcome to the Midnight Show, the show where I could only work on during midnight. Today, I'd like to talk about one of my favorite artists, Abe, or better known on Tumblr as Spaghetti Bastard. I will be separating this video into three parts for better consumption. The artist. Little is known about the artist, particularly because Abe seems to be very reserved about his personal life. He is Miso American. He first started to post art on DeviantArt around 2006. He is a dog lover, and that he's a man of culture. Abe seems to have a fascination with cryptozoology, conspiracy theory, and theology, considering these are motive that most often inspired his work. He's also a big fan of the Alien franchise, Godzilla, and Blame. You can see H.R. Geiger and Tutsumu Nihai influences in many of Abe's character designs. I haven't had many interactions with the man, aside from participating in a comic book contest called War for Ayuba with him. Didn't have much chance to compete or collaborate with Abe's either. But you can certainly check out the comic that he and those who had in the descriptions below. I assume that from his lack of self-representation online, it means that he isn't comfortable with it. And so, I decide not to dig or inquire any further. But from my personal observation, Abe strikes me as a Jinji Ito type. You know, despite how dark and depressing his work is, he seems to be a very fun person, or at least he doesn't want to express negativity on his platform. It feels like he's only here to show us his art, his worlds, and his passion. Like himself is only reserved for the real world. One thing that I had to say though, I kinda want to be this man's friend, considering how despite not truly knowing him, he somehow influenced my taste and aesthetic choice regardless. Imagine that, being able to influence people who you have never met, which is your arts and works. I wonder what playing in one of his D&D campaign would be like then. The Art I originally found Abe on DeviantArt around 2016, and it had left an impression ever since. While sketching is nothing new to those who draw, Abe truly made it his own, an art style that one could only describe as a chaotic maelstrom of purpose, ferocity and primordial wrath engraved on the digital canvas. While not quite a big fan of rendering, Abe's technical skills aren't something to be ignored. The consistency of his turnarounds, especially with his hectic art style, would leave a lesser artist struggling. AKA me. Everything he draws, especially his Bone Man comic, is lovingly showered with detail. To the level of Kantura Miura, God bless his name, or Artutsumu Nihai's work. Okay, maybe not that crazy, but it's pretty damn close. I guess what is so appealing to me about his art is not because it's good, but why it's good. Although I am relatively young, when I was even younger than that, I would find myself trying to mimic his art style, only to realize how hard it actually is to copy. It has a certain carefreeness to it despite being hectic and extremely detailed. Maybe I wasn't very good, but it's the same frustrating feelings where you know the answer to a math equation, but not the formula for it only to slowly discover through time and effort that like everyone else, his art style is a mixture of a lot of things that I really like myself. I can see someone who shares the same interest which reflects upon his art style. A little bit of alien, a little bit of blame, or by Omega. Some berserk, devil man, Godzilla, hellboy, neon genesis, and more. I see an abandonment of overly well rendered art for rendering sake, but instead something more minimal. It just blacks and whites and sometimes a saturated color. That's all Abe needs. I may be talking out of my ass here. I don't think he cares too much about his line art is clean or not, and it's kind of liberating to see. 
Maybe it started as him just simply trying to avoid his weakness, or maybe realism and painting was never his interest. Regardless, it reminds me of why I draw, for my own sake, not for deadlines or for some future job that I am only interested in because it lets me make money while drawing, but not what I really wanted to draw. Though maybe that is kind of childish of me to say. It is possible in this day and age, but not everyone can be a successful independent artist. Because as good as the art can be, what is more important is the story. When I started writing the script, it was around April, and now 2020 is over. It was mostly me getting sidetracked, but if I'm being honest, it was also because I'm not quite sure how to do Abe's works justice. It reminds me of Warhammer 40k in the aspect where each character he created feels like a troop unit, ready to be deployed onto the tabletop. However, despite also being grim dark, it is without the human element. In his stories, mortals are nothing more than food, currency, and batteries. Resources to be exploited. Statistic, not even worth considering. Taking our concept of mythology into its eventual Elrich conclusion. If such godly creature exists, what value do we have to them aside from being a means to an end? Within Bone Man, one of Abe's projects, the setting took place in an uncaring universe, where malevolent intelligence reigned supreme and war raged multidimensionally. Speaking of which, Allow me to introduce to you one of the major powers of Bone Man. It is a Balban hegemony. Mainly based on Mayan mythology, they are an empire of rot and fear. The Zabalbans are the master of the death equation, flash manipulation, excelling in engineering godkiller bioweapons, and transmuting divine poisons, toxins, and venoms. They primarily focus on flesh and bone based technology such as tumor computing and bio-machines. Because of their naturally low birth rate, when a Zabawan dies, it's always a great loss to the hegemony. Which is why their military force are mainly made of skeletal golems, aka bonemen, the namesake of the series. Each different type of units are named based on historical and mythological figures. And since they're Mayan gods, their economy is based on blood with the emphasis on emotional flavoring, which they can also weaponize into ammunition. One lore aspect of the Zabalban which I appreciate is how they're currently in wartime with Olympus. After they got caught corpse mining within Olympian space after the second Titanomachy War. I specify because this idea of a necromantic race mining titanic corpses for resources is cool as hell. And that's the thing though, Abe's concepts are so cool and very well thought out. He considers the themes of the mythologies, which he depicts thoroughly, doing research and applying obscure tidbits of mythologies in incredibly creative ways. Mythologies have always been a staple in modern media, so there's nothing wrong with using it. The problem occurs when they are only used as a wink or a nod, rather than expanding the original resource material. There's no twists or nuances, which frankly, frustrates the hell out of me. And perhaps I am biased here, since I am heavily into Lovecraftian and H.R. Geiger's statics. Both deem to perverse what's so natural and sacred, such as the human form and the belief in a higher power, which is one of the reasons why I find Abe's work so convincing. His stories and worlds are a cornucopia of what he thinks is cool, and in that sense, I like to believe we're very much kindred spirits. But like any mythologies, it's not the work of one author. From what I have seen, Abe is very welcoming to outside contributions. Unlike other creators, while not all ideas stick, it's always fun to see unique characters' ideas other had came up with, which I am a big fan of and had contribute myself. I had even commissioned him to make his own rendition. 
on that note, I appreciate seeing how Ape envision other people's concepts, especially after being in war for Ryuba with him, such as his rendition of Leopold by Hans, who is very friendly, Fungal by Ham, and Ink by Luzu, or Drelish by Grendel. And last but not least, Execution of Agony by Machistelli and Towerfucker by Pit of Swifts. Albeit Abe's aesthetic and style choice is not for everyone, I certainly believe in his vision and the project's potential. So just in case you haven't heard of him before, I'll leave links to his social medias and Patreon below along with a more accessible link tree for relevant lore bits or for ease of use. Regardless, if you enjoy hearing me nerding out about the things that I like, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, you're appreciated, and take care.